Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of the Bubbles and Berries podcast. My name is Ode and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, this is my podcast where I talk about knitting and sewing and crochet sometimes. Um, all the crafty things that I like to do. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's really nice to see you. And if you are a new viewer, welcome. Um, I hope I hope you will enjoy this this podcast. Um, if you want to find me elsewhere, I'm on uh, Instagram as Bubbles and Berries. That's where I'm the most active. And you can also find me on Ravelry. But I will have all the links to uh, where you can find me and all the items that I talk about in the description box below. Um, yeah, I think that's it for the introduction. Um, I have a little bit of a special episode for you today. It's not uh, my usual episode. It's what I guess I can call a Christmas special. It's an episode where I would like to share with you all the things that I made as gifts for um, Christmas. So there's mostly knitting and I plan to um, have one sewing item as well, hopefully. Um, I say I plan because I'm actually recording this in November. Today is the 25th of November and I'm going to record the first, pa the first part of this podcast today because the items that I would like to show you, um, I need to send them in the post. They're for family members that are in, who are in France and so I need to put it in the post um, like ahead of time. So they have it for Christmas for sure. So I am going to record this podcast in two parts, although it will just be one episode for you. Um, the first part I'm doing today, um, and then the second part I will probably record um, like just before Christmas. They're uh, presents for people who are coming to spend Christmas with us here. So um, yeah, I have a bit of time. Uh, to make those and I haven't started them anyway. So yeah, um, a two-part episode um, uh, for you and I will show you all of my gift knits for this year. Um, let's, let's get started. Uh, grab yourself something to drink if you like. I'm having coffee today in this very cute mug that I bought the other day. I love it. I like Robins a lot. We have we have quite a few around. We have a few come in our um, backyard. Um, and then we live, my husband and I, we live right near a big park in, in the center of Edinburgh. And there are lots and lots of little birds, including robins there. So yeah, I really like it. It's also, I know robins are quite um, like a festive kind of bird or like not a festive kind of bird, but associated with Christmas. Um, which it is not in France, is something that I found out about when I moved to the UK. Um, but yeah, I like it. They're, they're very cute birds. So yeah, grab yourself something to drink and then I will, um, I will start telling you about what I knit for Christmas. All right, so I'm going to show you three items today. They're all going to the same, um, family. Um, two of them are going to my aunt and my uncle and then the third one is going to my little cousin who is my aunt's and uncle's granddaughter, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know how you call... She's like, like she's my cousin's daughter. I just call her my little cousin because she's kind of my cousin and she's tiny. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I am going to start with what I made for my aunt and this is a pair of socks. So it's these socks. Uh, I have a sock blocker. Give me a second. I'm just going to put, on, put one of them on the blocker to show you. They have been washed and blocked and they're ready to, ready to go. Um, and so this is what um, they look like. I'm showing you one, but the second one is here. So yeah, this is the sock. So these are DK socks and the pattern is called, I'm just looking at my notes, it's called the Biscuit Socks by 
a designer called Fluffy Fibers on Ravelry, but I think on Instagram she's called Isabel Handmade Stories. Um, she is French, I believe, but her Instagram is in both French and English. It is a free pattern on Ravelry, so you can um, you can just find it and download it for free. And it is a pattern that has been designed for DK yarn. However, um, it's a very simple pattern repeat, and you can very easily adapt it to adapt it, adjust it. Hmm. You can make it in finger and weight yarn just as easily just do a bit more repeats um, in one round so yeah so the biscuit socks i guess they're called the biscuit socks because of those little stitches that look like you know those like round biscuits that have like tiny holes in them they were really 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 fun to knit um <clears throat> really fast because they're dk socks and um i made them for a UK size six and a half, I think. I didn't write it down, but yeah, I think I did a UK six and a half, which is also my size. So it doesn't take very long at all. Um, I usually do 10 rounds for the cuff and then 30 for the leg and then a heel flap and gusset, which I think is what the pattern called for. That's always what I do, but I think that's also what the pattern called for. I always do um, a little garter edge on the side of my heel of my heel flap because it makes it easier to pick up stitches afterwards and then yeah the top of the foot is in pattern and then the bottom of the foot is just plain stuck in it and then my usual uh, round toe that's that's just the way I make socks mm, the yarn that I used uh, I actually used a fingering weight yarn um, that I had in my stash it's a yarn by uh, Kupni I don't know let me say that again who knits sock yeah I'm, I'm sure you've heard of these yarns they're really nice yarns for socks and they exist in both fingering weight and DK but I already had a finger a fingering weight one at home so I just had it double which I think is nice I think I've maybe have mentioned this in previous episodes but I find that holding fingering weight double is a bit thicker than just DK and so the socks are really nice and squishy and also it uses up pretty much um, all of the yarn. This is what I have left. So I, I used two skeins uh, or I had two skeins of 50 grams each and yeah for a UK size six and a half which is a European 39 and a half between 39 and 40 and I just have just those tiny balls of yarn left so I'm not gonna I don't think I'm gonna knit anything with that but I'll use it as um, scrap yarn you know to do like provisional cast-ons or to put stuff on hold or things like that and the color the shade that I use is called Axonite I want to say I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it but yeah, it's that kind of a dusty pink. It's a funny yarn because, or it's a funny colorway because um, it sort of looks different depending on the light. In some light, if it's nice and bright, it's gonna look pink, but then at other times it's gonna look more like mauve or like toward, going towards the gray. I don't know. I like it. I really like it a lot. It's a very unusual color, I find. So, yeah. I think that's all I have to say about these socks. Yeah. It is a free pattern, so yeah, go ahead and, and I will link it down below and download it and um, give it a go. It's a really, really fun knit. So yeah, so these are the socks. For my aunt and so I also made a pair for my uncle because you know don't want him to get jealous or anything and so I made him another pair of socks also DK socks and these are in a dark gray so let me put one on the sock blocker so obviously um, he's a man 
and he's got bigger feet than me and my sub blockers are my size so it's a bit too big but you know uh, and this is what it looks like so this is I also used a pattern I've actually made these socks before and it's called the broken rib socks by Emma Bermudez I want to say again I'll link it down below um, this pattern was written for, or is written for fingering weight yarn um, and the first pair that I made I did make in fingering weight yarn however the repeat is quite short so you can easily adjust it to um, DK yarn because I also these socks are also DK weight socks um, so yeah you just do less repeats basically um, I I think I think I did 52 let me see I did 52 stitches around so usually when I make DK socks for me or for most people really I do 48 stitches around uh, in DK and then 64 in fingering weight but I don't I don't know I was afraid that 48 might be a bit too narrow for my uncle but then when you look at DK sock pattern patterns usually the next size is 56 stitches and that seemed too much so I went sort of in the middle and I did 52 and because it's a rib it's a broken rib pattern but it's still a rib so it's a bit more stretchy and um, I'm sure it'll fit fine it'll be just fine um, so yeah so same thing as the previous socks um, I did 10 rounds here I think here I may have done I may have done 40 rounds instead of 30 that I did on the other one heel flap and gusset um, and then same thing like pattern on the top stocking it on the bottom and the round toe um, I have a sock ruler I think you can see it just here in the in the background um, which allow, allows me to adjust the length of the foot on the ruler based on how long a certain foot size is in centimeters and in inches I guess and that means that when I make socks for other people then I can just set the ruler up to their foot length and then make sure the the socks fit them properly so yeah for the yarn that I used for that is the same as the previous ones so the coop knit sock yeah <laughs> it's really hard for me to pronounce this I don't really know why um, so yeah the coop knit socks yeah in the shade uh, melanite so that's a dark gray one it's a really nice it's a really nice gray I think I like it a lot um, yeah, and um, because, so when I make DK socks for me, uh, using fingering weight yarn held double, I usually up, use up pretty much 100 grams of yarn. I usually have maybe like eight, seven or eight grams left. And so I was worried that doing it for a man, so he's a European 42 or 43, which I don't know what, what that is in um, UK sizes or US sizes even. Um, I'm a 39 European and that means that I'm a UK six and a half. So he's a 42, 43, so more than UK six and a half. Um, I was, um, all that to say that I was worried that 100 grams of, around 100 grams of yarn would not be enough. And so that yarn comes in skeins of 50 grams. So I thought I would buy three skeins. And, and you know, if I have one left over, it's fine. But I didn't really want to run out. And that was a good call on my part because I ended up using 106 grams of yarn. So yeah, not, not, not a lot more than 100, but still like just two skeins, I would not have had enough. So yeah, so I have this leftover which is like nearly a skein I think it's 44 grams or something 
I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that's definitely um, definitely usable, you know, maybe for like color work socks or for kids socks, baby socks, who knows. Um, I'll, find, I'll find something to do um, with those. What else do you say about these socks? Um, oh yeah, so both socks and all of my DK socks, I knit them on 9 inch circulars. That's what I use for all my socks and for DK I use 3.5. Millimeter. I know some people use um, 3.25 or 3.5 just like for fingering weight. Some people use 2.25 or 2.5 because I'm a tight knitter. I use 2.5 for fingering weight yarn and 3.5 for DK weight yarn. So yeah, I think that's all I have to say about these socks. Um, two pairs of socks. I hope they like them. Um, definitely I mean, not definitely, but they're not, um, obviously you don't really wear DK socks in, in shoes because they're so thick, they might make it a bit, or maybe you do, I don't, but I think for me they're so thick that um, they make it very tight in my shoes, but they're great um, house socks. And they live in the north of France, so it's quite cold in winter, um, and they have like a nice fireplace, so... I think they enjoy wearing those, you know, in front of the TV by the fire in, in winter or something like that. Well, I hope so anyway. So yeah, that's my second gift knit for this year and my second pair of socks. I am planning to make a third pair of socks as a gift, but I haven't started it yet. So I'll show you in uh, part two. So in a few minutes for you and in a few weeks um, for me when I get to record again. All right, and uh, third finished object, third um, gift knit for Christmas is a jumper for my little cousin who's one year old. Um, so I made her a really tiny, a tiny jumper. It's so small. It's so tiny. I think it's the smallest thing that I've ever made. Um, yeah, I really like it. I had so much fun making this. So um, let me tell you all the info for that. So this is a pattern by Long Avec Anna. I'm sure I'm sure you've heard of her. Um, she's a really talented designer and she has her own brand of yarn now. There's wonderful yarn. I have some of it in my stash. It's really beautiful. And she's written a few, a couple of books, including this one. So it's in French. She's um, She's French, but she lives in the UK. Most of her um, sort of like single standalone patterns available on Ravelry are available both in English and in French, but her books, which is this one, as well as another one on color work, I think, I don't, I don't have it, are just in French, unfortunately. I don't, I don't know if she plans to have them translate into English. Um, I have no idea. I guess, like ha translate one, translating one pattern, one individual pattern, is one thing, you know. And especially when you're self-publishing it as a designer, uh, either you do it yourself or you find someone to translate it for you, and then you put it up on Ravelry and on Ravelry, and that's it. But a whole book, um, it's a lot more work and it's a lot more complicated because you need to find a publisher and a printer and and um, yeah, all of this. It's a whole different game. So yeah, unfortunately it's only available in French right now, um, but maybe in the future it will be available in English. I I don't know. Um, I guess the best way would be to follow her on Instagram. I'll put her Instagram below because if it ever comes out in English, I'm sure she'll announce it there. So anyway, so this is the book. It's called Tricoté en couleur, which means um, knitting in, in color um, and it's a yeah it's a book just about that like she talks about um, different colors and how to knit with different colors um, like stripes and um, all sorts of techniques and then she has a few patterns in it which are all very beautiful and I'm gonna make several of them including the one that I just made for my Little cousin, I'm gonna try and find. Oh, there it is. Uh, nope. Let me put this away. Oh, there it is. 
then yeah. So this is the pattern. It's called Tavi T A V Y. She has it listed on, on Ravelry as well if you make it. So you can do a project page, but the pattern is not on Ravelry as far as I know. And so this is what um, it looks like that these two little girls are, are her kids. They're so cute. Um, yeah. So this one is designed for kids. Uh, it goes from sizes three months to 12 years, which is quite, quite a nice range. I made, um, the one that I made, I made it in size 18 month. Um, even though my cousin turned, my little cousin turned one in early November, um, you know, like babies are always, you always sort of um, buy clothes one size up because they just grow so fast. So um, yeah, I asked my aunt first if she could um, like tell me which size she thought was best. And uh, yeah, she said size 18 months. So that's what I did. And it's a little, uh, I guess you call it in English, a Breton sweater, like a little sailor's sweater. Um, and it is, it is very cute. Um, the yarn that I used for that is Drops Charisma. So I was looking for a yarn that was wool because like I said, they live in the north of France and it's cold and they need the warmth and also I just I don't really like the feel of acrylic to knit with it myself and I find that acrylic is not that um, warm anyway so I was looking for wool but super wash or wool that could just be thrown in the washing machine because you know like my cousin is um, she's a new mom and she works full-time and um, so does her so does her partner like they have better things to do than to hand wash baby knits so I went with Drops Charisma uh, in the shade um, 37 which I think was also called dark gray blue and then for the stripes I just used just a white one um, these two together I think the white is number 19 yeah number 19 um, I use needles um, I used four millimeters for the body and um, 3.75 millimeters for the ribbing at the neck and the um, wrists and then the bottom of the hem of the body. Um, I think I went one size up compared to the pattern but that's that's pretty normal for me. Um, I'm a tight knitter so yeah I usually have to go up in needle size and I think the yarn that drops charisma was a bit thicker than the yarn that Anna used for her pattern so um, yeah it worked out with me just going one size up it was super quick to knit and really fun and really quick um, even with the stripes like it's not it adds a bit of interest right it's not just plain um, stocking it in the same color and round and round um, and rounds it adds a bit of interest and I really liked it so um, let me see yeah so you start at the at the top it's knit um, top down yeah it has uh, raglan increases here and then so you do uh, you work in the round up until you get to the underarms and then you do the body and then you do the sleeves um, it is a pattern designed for beginners, I think. Well, it is very beginner friendly. Um, definitely, if you haven't done a jumper before, um, I would highly recommend that if you want to give it a go, especially because they're all in small sizes. So, you know, it's not very difficult and you're not committing to a full on, full size adult jumper. Uh, so yeah, it's knitted, it, you do it, you knit it um, top down and the, the neckline is a folded one. And so in the pattern, she says to just um, knit so many rows and then go into the body and then you fold it and you sew it together at the end, which absolutely um, makes it easier for beginners, I think. 
what I did is that I folded it and then knit, knitted the, the two ends together with the first row of the body. Like I folded it as I went. I didn't wait until the end. I didn't sew it um, together. And then, and then the only other sort of, not really modification because I didn't modify the pattern, but um, I think she just calls for a standard bind off or an easy bind off. I don't think she has very specific instructions about what bind off to use, but I used a tubular bind off. I think it looks the, because it's rib, I think it looks the best. And I mean, you know, if you do a tubular bind off on a jumper that's for you, for an adult, it just takes, especially on the body, it just takes forever. It looks amazing, but it takes forever. But on a baby jumper, it was fine. <laughs> it didn't take forever at all. Even the sleeves, I mean, come on, like, look at how tiny they are. It just took, like, it took not even 10 minutes to, uh, to bind off. So yeah, really fun, really fun. So yeah, that's, that's my little tabby Breton sweater that I made for my little cousin and that I am now um, going to send in the post so she can have them, she can have it for Christmas. Um, I didn't tell my cousin about it, so the baby's mo mother. I told my aunt, so the baby's grandmother, she knows. I will send her the jumper and she will wrap it and put it under the under the tree because obviously the baby is one year old so she doesn't she doesn't get presents right she doesn't um she doesn't get the excitement of opening presents and things like that but her mom my cousin um does like and i think it would be a really nice surprise for her to um find this little jumper for her kid under the tree so yeah i'm really looking forward to that um i'm gonna I'm going to put it all in a box and I, I don't think I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to ask my aunt if she can wrap it in, in a gift wrap because um, because of Brexit. I'm not, I don't want to chance it. I don't want to, I don't want to risk. I don't know, you know, if, if, if the package comes across a grumpy customs agent and who decides to open everything and to check the contents and then it's all in, um, gift wrap and and I don't know I just I don't want any trouble so I'm gonna send it as is so that if they open it they can see it's just it's nothing illegal <laughs> it's just a gift and um and then my my aunt will wrap it up for me and put it under the tree so yeah that's all I have to show you for this first part um I will knit the rest make the rest uh, that I plan to make for a Christmas present and then I will um, record the second part of this video and add it now in like two minutes uh, for you to watch and um, yeah I think that's it no, no reason for me to just go on and on and on um, I'll see you in a few minutes for you and a few weeks for me while I make all those things um, see you in a minute hi welcome back um, so it is now December 21st and I am done with all my gift knits and oh my god a lot has happened since I recorded the first part of this episode um, you may have seen it on Instagram or just by watching the news uh, COVID is out of hands again and um, that means that unfortunately my family won't be able to come and spend Christmas with us in Scotland um, Friends basically banned um, travel to the UK, so we found out uh, two, three days ago, so basically a week before, or less than a week before they were supposed to arrive, because they were supposed to arrive tomorrow, so the 22nd, and yeah, just, just a big, it's a big blow, you know, like, I was really looking forward to seeing them, they were really looking forward to coming, um, we weren't able to spend Christmas together last year, obviously, because pretty much the whole world was in lockdown. Um, and yeah, I don't know, just just sad and disappointed and just tired <laughs> of this whole situation. Like it's just yeah, it was 
it was a big um it was a big blow but you know like that's that's life um there's not much we can do about it um it is safer considering the current situation not to travel probably but yeah i don't know just just sad but anyway it it's okay it's gonna be okay we're gonna make the most of uh christmas here my husband and i it's just gonna have it's just gonna be a very um quiet christmas just the two of us which is also um it's also quite nice i've been quite tired lately so i'm looking forward to um just having some proper downtime rest and knit and go for walks and that's pretty much it until the new year so yeah it'll be okay and and hopefully my family can come and visit soon um they're planning to come in february now so we'll see how that goes um we haven't booked anything just yet but uh, we'll see in january um how things are and if February is a good time for them to come, or maybe March. Um, I booked tickets to go to France in at the end of April for Easter weekend, so hopefully that um, that can go ahead too. But um, yeah, we'll see. I just I don't really want to think about it right now. I don't want to get excited. I don't want to make like plans or anything because yeah, let's just let's get on to 2022 and then and then we'll see how things go. Um, that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop rambling now and complaining about um, COVID in the situation. I'm sure many other people have it much worse. Um, but that being said, um, I did still make things for them, obviously, and I will just um, send them in the post, and and it'll be just as fine, and I'm sure they'll be just as excited to to get them. And um, yeah, this I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the last two things that I made. So I know in the first part I'd said that um, I was gonna make three more things, two um, knits and one sewing project. Uh, the sewing project was supposed to be a dress for my sister, which I sewed yesterday and it just, it didn't work out. I, I don't know what happened. Um, I followed the pattern just right. I double checked everything, but the, like, the size was fine, but the, the cut or the fit or there's something wrong. It was too tight around the back. The armholes were too like narrow, like going like really up into my armpit. And I was I was trying it on because we're basically like she's taller than me, but um, a little bit taller. But otherwise, we're pretty much the same. So chest wise and everything if it fits me, it'll fit her. Um, the bust darts were like, way too low. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I really don't. And I don't really know how I could go about fixing it. And honestly, I don't really have the energy right now. Um, so yeah, it is a beautiful fabric that I got that I will definitely use to make something for her because it's um, a color that she would wear uh, quite a lot, but it's not really my color. So this, this fabric is for her and I will make something else with it. And I have an idea of what I will make, but... Um, this will just have to wait until the new year or later. Right now, this whole project has gone into the naughty corner and it's gonna stay there for a while, I think, um, which is fine. Like, it's not like I have to make things uh, for people as presents. And I think instead I'm gonna get her, I saw in the shop the other day, a really lovely pair of earrings that immediately made me think of her. So I think I'll get her that and, and and she'll be quite happy with those and then I'll, I'll sew her something eventually. So yeah, the sewing project is just not there. Uh, but we have the other two knitting project and so I'm going to start with the first one and you're not going to be surprised to know that it's socks again because socks make such nice gift. Like they're really lovely to give, they're really lovely to receive and they're quite um, quick and easy to make. So I don't know why I took them. I took them off the blocker to show them to you that was a bit silly let me grab a blocker so they're dk socks again because you know i love my dk socks and also they're quick to knit i'm getting tangled here and they are for my mom's partner and this is what they look like so the pattern i didn't really follow a pattern it's a um, let me show maybe on this one you can see better it's a three 
a three by one rib. I didn't do a cuff, I just tarded, uh, cast on, and then did three by one all the way down to the toe. The under the foot is plain stockinette. The heel is a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. So slipping stitches here and then my usual um, garter edge and then the round, the round um, toe. I mean, really, like just, just my basic socks. Um, I've made socks for him before. I know the size that I made fit, but I did see a picture of him wearing the socks um, that I made him um, in, in the summer. And it seems like he has quite a, a wide foot, like not very long feet, but a wide foot. So I figured um, like a three by one, um, or like just any rib really, it's so stretchy that it should be fine. Um, yeah. So it's DK weight, but the yarn is fingering. The yarn, I don't know what the colorway was. It's a sock yarn. Um, I think 7525 probably, that's what it feels like, that I got in a mystery box from Botanical Yarn. Um, she's, um, she's an English dyer. I think she's also the woman who organizes the Yorkshire yarn phase. Yarn fest if i'm not mistaken maybe i am i don't think so though but anyway last year i think around this time or maybe in february she was a bit of um she was doing a bit of a clear out i guess and uh, just making space in her storage space for new uh items and so selling um the older ones uh, at a discounted price and basically she was putting together a mystery boxes and you could get uh, full 100 gram skeins, you could get minis and, and all sorts of things. So I got a bunch of minis in my box and I also got this really lovely yarn. Um, it's, I guess it looks a bit more purpley on the camera than it is. It's just a grey, it's a warm grey and it has touches of brown in it and maybe a little bit of um, purple in some places, but not very much. I don't know, a nice, a nice neutral and um, yeah, very squishy. It was a fingering weight, I held it double, I used 3.5 millimeter needles, 9 inch circulars, and um, yeah, <laughs> just the way I'm, I knit socks. Um, nothing particularly fancy or particularly exciting, but um, really nice, really nice to knit, and, and hopefully um, he'll like them. Um, yeah, so that's gift knit number four I think now and it's um, socks once again oh yeah and I made a size um, UK size 6 or France or like European size 39 I think it is and I did um, I cast on 48 stitches uh, around on 3.5 that's usually what I do um, yeah I usually I don't usually do uh, the smaller size that most sock patterns have because it's just too narrow for me or for everyone I know really and the only time that I would go to the larger size um, that would be um, like when I make socks for my husband because he has quite white feet um, but everyone else that I've made socks for I've done like 48 stitches when I'm using DK and 64 when I'm using a figuring weight and as far as I know it's fine um, it fits just fine so that's what I'm doing so yeah the socks and now the last gift knit, last but not least, and actually, I think, not that I have favorites, but the one that I kind of liked making the most because it was a bit new to me and um, the yarn was just amazing to knit with. And it is this shawl for my mom. So I say new to me because I don't, I have made shawls before, but I don't make, I don't really make many of them. Um, but yeah, this is for my mom and it's this shawl. So a triangular shawl, it's like an as asymmetrical, is that the asymmetrical shawl? But it looks pretty symmetrical um, nonetheless. I'm gonna come closer. So it's got cables on one end and then the rest is just garter. So the pattern is called, um, the pattern has, it's by a Scottish designer um, her name is Liz Cork, and she the pattern has a like Scottish Gaelic name, and I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm I'm gonna put it here. Um, 
yeah, I just, I don't know where to start. Um, I, I really want to learn Scottish Gaelic or like Gaelic, Irish Gaelic as well. And I just, yeah, I don't know where to start um, on how to pronounce these these words. But she says in her in the pattern that it means little waves. So I'm going to call it the little wave um, shawl. Um, it is it is really clever. So you start at this at the top here, um, and then you sort of establish the the cable pattern. It's really easy cable. It's not like it looks nice, but it's really, really easy. And then you just go down that edge, basically. You create that um, border, I guess, and that border as you go. And then once you've reached the end, um, it's just a simple, it's just a simple bind off. Um, no I chord, no fancy thing, just a basic I chord, uh, not I chord. I just said not high chord, just the basic bind off. I guess you could do whatever bind off you wanted, but um, yeah. So the yarn that I used, and I've, I think I've showed it um, before, I bought it at Glasgow School of uh, yeah Glasgow School of Yarn, so yarn festival that I went to in October, I believe, and it is by a Scottish uh, yarn dyer who is uh, based in up in the Highlands, um, and it's called Ripples Crafts. And this is their uh, Sylvan four ply base, uh, 100 grams, 366 meters, 60% merino, 20% yak, and 20% silk. And this blue is called a summer swim. And it's such a soft, lovely yarn. I don't think I'd knit, I think it's my first time knitting with yak, although it's just 20% and most, most of it is merino. So it didn't, it felt really soft. Uh, softer than um, your like merino nylon sock yarn, but yeah, it was like it was really really lovely. And so the blue, I don't know if I can get. It. I've never, I have not been able to um, have it show properly on camera. Even like when I'm filming or when I'm taking a picture, it just doesn't work. Um, although I think this is fairly close. It's like this, but that sort of uh, petrol blue, petroleum blue, you know. Um, so it's a bit more tealy than what you see right now. It's really, really, really beautiful. And so the pattern is written, um, it's very clever, it's written for one skein of DK, two skeins of DK, or three skeins of, DK, of DK, and then, um, yeah, and then I guess the, the repeat is fairly short, so you can um, like repeat it until you run out of yarn, basically. And so my yarn, like I just said, is a four ply, it's a fingering weight, and so I held it double. Um, and I had 366 meters. And the one skein, the pattern written for one skein says it's for 212 meters, and then for two skeins it's 424. So I knew I would be somewhere in between. So what I did is that I made um, the pattern as if I had one and a half skein because I knew that I had a bit more than one and a half skein of DK um, or, or the equivalent and then in between each repeat I weighed my yarn to see how much I used and then sort of could guess how much I would need for the next one because obviously you start from the narrow tip and then you increase so each row takes a bit or each section each repeat takes a bit more yarn but not that much more and so um, doing that I was able to use pretty much um most of like all of my yarn i think i have maybe 10 10 or 15 grams left which could have i mean i could have done another repeat but it would have been tight and i didn't really want to play yarn chicken on that one so um yeah i stopped i think i did almost almost as many repeats as i think two less repeats than the medium size which is more than i thought I was going to be able to do, so that was nice. And then when I blocked it, I really stretched it out. It grew quite a bit, and I also really stretched it out. So it has a nice, um, not too large, but not too small either. Like a nice, a nice size. Um, that is, I think, a little bit bigger than the final measurement of the medium size that she writes in the pattern just because I stretched it a bit, but I'll, I'll show you. My mom is about the same height as me. I'm um, 
165 centimeters and so if you have it and i have a chunky sweater now so like it comes really nice on the shoulder it's not too big here um she could probably have like a, a pin or a brooch or something if she wanted to but it stays quite nicely on the shoulders and then the back is here which to me is my waist um, just to give you an idea um yeah that's my waist so yeah i think it's quite nice i don't think my mom has a shawl um i knew she used to have years ago really really big scarves like massive rectangles um that she liked to wear um around her neck and things like that but i feel like now she's i don't know that she would have something like that still because it's a bit bulky and sort of in the way um but yeah i don't think she has a shawl i think that's kind of the perfect size for her because she can have it on her shoulders but it's not so big that you're all like wrapped up and you can't move so much um so yeah i think i think it'll be fine the idea was that i mean it's really nice and the idea is that like it doesn't have to be a fancy thing right it doesn't have to be something that she just wears on fancy occasions uh she works from home quite a bit um and i know sitting all day like she tends to get cold i know she wears like woolen socks and i'd made her um slippers last year and things like that so i think having just something like not too big not too small um to have on the shoulder is probably going to be nice for her if she gets cold um when she's working or in front of the telly in the evening i know she always has like a lap blanket so i figured a shawl would also be a nice thing and then um yeah i know she likes to go um her and her partner uh, go to the theater quite often or, or the ballet or something like that and i know a lot of the time those um, venues tend to have the ac on quite high and it can be a bit cold a bit chilly for in the audience and so that could also be like you know if you dress a bit fancy to go to the theater and then just have this on i think i think that could be really nice as well um and yeah because it's merino it's a nice warmth but it's not it's not the warmest thing you know it's not like mohair or icelandic yarn or any of that so it's like a yeah, like a nice um, in between kind of um, kind of yarn. Because also, she lives in the south of France, so even if it gets cold in winter, it doesn't get um, really cold, and it's not damp, so it's not that cold that goes into your bones, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just rambling, but yeah, it's a really, really, really lovely pattern. Really easy. If you've never done cables, definitely give it a go because like it's the cables are really easy and it will be a great way to learn um they're also and i'm, I'm not going to reveal too much because it's a paid for pattern but the cables are made in such a way that it's actually reversible so that's one side um you can see like nice and like nice bumps and everything and then i flip it around and it looks exactly the same so it's not like you have the knit stitches on one side and then the purl stitches on the other and yeah, the way the way the designer does that is so cool. It's really really nice, and it's really squishy. So yeah, you could wear it any any way you want. I mean, it seems a bit of a lot of I don't know decision <laughs> making to decide whether you like it better with the cable on this side or on this side. I would just throw it, and it would be wherever it is. But um, yeah. Oh, got hair everywhere. So yeah, that's the little wave shawl with the Scott's name that I, <laughs> I, will, I put on the screen previously and I'll put it down in the description below with everything else. Um, yeah, like I said, I held the yarn double and then I used five millimeter needles, um, which is like, I think the pattern called for four millimeter needles with just one strand of DK yarn. I find that two strands of fingering, although you can use it as DK, is a bit a little bit thicker than just one strand of, of DK yarn and also um, my gauge is always a bit off and I figured like, I liked the I liked the way the fabric looked on five millimeter and I thought that I wanted to go to the highest needle size that I could whilst getting a nice fabric just so I could get a bigger shawl 
uh, in the end and it worked just fine. Um, yeah, so I used five millimeters, I used my Chiagu needle on the cable and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, I'm, I'm really, I wish I could have given this to her uh, in person, but obviously that's not going to happen. I'm really looking forward to sending sending it to her and, and to hear what um, what she thinks. Um, yeah, I think she's rearranged some plans for Christmas, so she's going to be away visiting one of my aunts for Christmas. So I think I'll send it to her after um, after Christmas and hopefully she likes it and she um, she uses it. I mean, she she knits or oh, she's a knitter. She, she knows how to knit. She hasn't knit, knit it. I don't know if that's how you say it in years just because she's really busy with work and all sorts of things. I think she sews a lot more than she knits these days, but like she appreciates um, handmade knitted items and I think she will um, she will enjoy wearing it and I think she will enjoy it and I think she would really like that color is definitely um, her kind of color. So yeah, I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to ramble on and on and on. Uh, these are all the things that I made this year for Christmas as gifts. Um, I don't really have a rule about gift knitting, uh, like whether I don't make anything or if I make something for one person, that means I have to make something for another person and or anything like that. Um, I usually, if I find, if I see a pattern uh, that I think, oh, this person would really like it and that person is knit worthy. <laughs> Um, then that's usually what I will make um, and yeah and so tend to like change over over the years um, so yeah uh, those are all my gift knits um, I'm gonna stop because I've said that already um, I hope because I'm gonna be posting this after Christmas I hope you had a nice Christmas uh, if you're celebrating and I wish you um, a nice rest of your festive season uh, happy new year 2022 Hopefully it's better than 2021 and 2020. Um, hopefully we can uh, have a bit more peace of mind and a bit less uncertainty and be able to travel a bit more um, easily. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the new year. I think I will, rep I will post a one of my regular podcast episode the first week of January. I think that's the plan. Um, I will see you then. Bye.